I was born in Waterbury, Connecticut. I was raised in Stanford, Connecticut, and I got into radio when I was about 21. Prior to that, I was a drummer, and I had played with quite a few bands around Connecticut. And I had always wanted to be in radio. Once I got into radio, I found out that uh, the man that hired me said that everything I did was funny, including the news. So he uh, said, you'd just be a funny guy with the records, and that's how I got into the comedy end of it. And of course, in the back of your mind, when you're doing something like that, I was always the crazy kid, the drummer with the Connecticut Symphony that was always making everybody laugh. And uh, I guess, as Jerry Lewis once said, most comics or comedians start that way. They're always the nutty kid in the neighborhood. So uh, there I was uh, at 21 in my first radio job up in Hornell, New York, which is 320 six miles from Stanford and uh, about 10 hours by car from home so I wasn't getting home much then and I was married at the time for the first time and uh, I finally decided I had to get closer to a home so after about a year up in Hornell I applied for a job and I finally found one in Bristol Connecticut and I only got that job because the wire recording I sent played back slow slower than what I recorded it at so the station that hired me thought they were getting somebody like Edward R. Murrow, and actually my voice was changing then because I was 21. But they hired me anyway, and within a period of about a week, they fired everybody and kept me on, and I became program director. And after about three months, a friend of mine in Bridgeport, Connecticut, who was also a program director, said, hey, if you ever hear of a morning man who doesn't drink, let me know, because everybody we have is a drunk. And so I said, I don't drink, and he said, send me a... Uh, a tape or a disc or something and I did and he said it's good enough uh, we'll hire you the main thing is you don't drink and within a couple of weeks he said hey you can be very funny we're not going to have you do news or anything in, in the morning you just do the the funny stuff between the records and uh, this is the way it all began and I was in Bridgeport until 1956 and I started getting the last two years I was in there from 1954 to 56 I was getting offers to go to places such as Boston and Cleveland and um, big cities, much bigger than, than Bridgeport. But the, uh, my main ambition was to get to New York City. I figured if everybody's offering me this kind of money, they were offering me anywhere from 500 to $750 a week to leave Bridgeport, mainly because they found out there was a guy that does funny things with commercials and records. And uh, as I said, in the back of my mind during all this period was the idea, well, I could also turn this into acting because what I was doing on the radio was creating an image. People thought that I had a whole room full of people because of the gimmicks and the tapes and the voices and whatnot. And uh, so lo and behold, one day I got a phone call in 1956 from CBS Radio in Hollywood. And this voice said, this is CBS Hollywood. How'd you like to come out and do our early morning show out here? And I had been picturing New York hearing me because I was only 60 miles from New York City. But anyway, I said to the man in California, I said, let me think it over, yes. And I went out there and I uh, was in radio for about, well, I signed a five-year contract, but I was in radio for about two or three years when everybody started coming with a talk show idea because what I was doing on the air by that time was interviews in, in addition to the kidding with the records. And everybody said, what you do is a Tonight type show thing like Steve Allen does. So let's, because Steve was also, uh, he also got started at this same station in Hollywood that I was then at. And uh, so Don Federson came and he said, we want you to replace Johnny Carson on Who Do You Trust? Because Johnny's going to go do the Tonight Show. And I said, no, I want to be an actor. And uh, then they came along, Ralph Edwards came along and said, how'd you like to do this? Is your life? We're going to revive it. I said, no. And 13 other people named Harry came along and said, how'd you like to do a game show? And I said, no, I want to be an actor. But nobody believes you. You know, you do radio. And everybody says, gee, that radio show you do is such fun. Why don't we just put a camera on it and make you a talk show host? And I said, no. So to prove to people that I could act, I went out and I did little theater. In fact, I did the play that I'm doing here. It was one of the first plays I ever did. And that was Who Was That Lady I Saw You With? And I did the other role. I did the buddy role. Because the buddy role is always in my mind, the comedy role. It's, it's uh, so far as uh, the lines go and everything, they get all the funny lines, and that's what I wanted, the funny lines. And I also did Tunnel of Love, and that, and that one I played Gig Young's role, the one of the, the, the swing and next-door neighbor. I always played swing and next-door neighbors. But during this period, everybody would come and say, hey, you can really act. You're not just a guy on the radio. And, uh, and then one day I did a Dick Van Dyke show. Up until that time, I'd been doing one or two line bits on television, I uh, was always the guy that said, hey, let's get a bunch of girls and have a party. And one day I did a 
a good role on the Dick Van Dyke show, and the Donna Reed people saw it. The Donna Reed people said, hey, uh, you know, we thought maybe the reason you weren't doing television is because you had two heads and you, you know, had a long tail or something, and you're not bad looking, and uh, you do comedy well, and how'd you like to come on our show? And I went on Donna Reed for two years. After about a year and a half of that, I had to get out because of illness. It made me sick. But I was earning money. I was earning while I was learning. And in the meantime, I was still doing my radio show. Thank goodness the radio show got off at 10 o'clock, and Donna Reed didn't start filming till around 10. Those days that I had to be on Donna Reed earlier because we were on location, I would pre-tape my morning show, which was kind of rough because when you got traffic bulletins and time and weather. But we figured a way to do it with cartridges and tapes and whatnot, and nobody even knew I was gone. And uh, anyway, after leaving Donna Reed, along came a man who said, how'd you like to read a script for a new series that's going to be called The Heroes? Eventually, they changed it to Hogan's Heroes, and I got the role of Hogan, and that was six years on that show, and six years in which I met my present wife, who was Sigrid Valdis on the show. She's the blonde girl, Commandant Secretary Hilda, with the pigtails, uh, amongst other things. And uh, we now have a little baby, and uh, it's been great. We've been actually been off of Hogan's now for a year and a half, we stopped filming it a year and a half ago, but they were being repeated every night here on Channel 9 in Chicago. In most cities, we're on every night. And uh, in the interim, since the show went off, I've been on the road doing many, many plays, including this one. And uh, in fact, I've worked at the Drury Lane Theater here in Chicago. I'm, I'm in Chicago, I would say, at least two months out of every year. I spend time here uh, working in some capacity because I, my wife and I just love Chicago. We love the whole area. This is the first time I've ever worked in West uh, Chicago, though. Most of my work has been in North or South, but this area out here is just gorgeous. I got to see the town you're from, Aurora, the other day by mistake. I got off the wrong freeway, which is the easiest way to find out what you're doing in a, in a town that you're not too sure of, is to take a freeway and take a chance. And uh, I found more uh, more places that I, uh, I I never knew about. Uh, that I, in just trying to get back here to the Pheasant Run Playhouse, all you've got to do is get on 64 and come west. But somehow I always figure there must be a shorter way. There's got to be a shorter way. And I ran into a couple of cows the other day looking for a, a shortcut. It's That's not your way. No, it's just, it's really weird. I mean, it's really, we're really out in the farm area, but it's lovely out here, and I love working at this theater, of course. It's a funny play, and it's uh, Pam Hayes, who's playing my leading lady, and it is uh, an excellent actress who's been on the road with me for the past couple of years, and uh, we enjoy working with each other, and thank goodness my wife approves, so there's no conflict there, and it's uh, it's just... Great, great fun, and the audience seems to like it, and uh, they get out of here by quarter of 11 every night, so that's, that's fine. Well, I, I like working with a live audience. I prefer that over the uh, working to just a camera where there's nobody that's responding. You tell a joke and nothing happens, you know. Here you tell a joke and you hear laughter, or you don't. And if you don't, then you begin analyzing in your mind, why didn't I? Uh, either I delivered it wrong, or I was standing wrong, or the audience didn't hear it. There's always a reason why. Well, thank you. Whose dog is this? 